We say don't judge a book by its cover, but when consuming music, especially digital music, we often do. Now there's definitely examples of good albums with bad cover art, but let's be honest, more often than not, when the album art isn't great, the music isn't great. I mean, decent Leonard Cohen album here, but just horrible cover art that tells you absolutely nothing about the vibe of the album or the mood that you can expect. With thousands of tracks, releases, playlists, and podcasts available on platforms around the world, your cover art is going to be your first point of contact to introduce new fans to your musical universe and will help you stand out from the crowd and get discovered. And when it comes to preparing your release for distribution, it's important to follow a set of standardized rules when it comes to your cover art, otherwise your music will not make it into the shops. So in this video today, we're gonna walk you through all those requirements that your cover art needs to follow, as well as give you some tips and tricks to help your cover art stand out. Before we dive into all of that, if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button down there and like this video so that you don't miss out on any of the new videos we're putting out here on this channel. All right, let's get started. To make sure that their content is standardized, each streaming platform and download shop has a specific set of rules when it comes to your cover art, and they have the right to refuse or even take down your release if these rules are not met. Our quality assurance team here at iMusician works hard behind the scenes to ensure that any artwork submitted through our platform respects those rules to make sure that your music reaches the shop safely and stays online forever. So let's go through some of these guidelines. The first one being dimensions. The most important thing is your artwork needs to be square and the dimensions must be at least 3000 by 3000 pixels. You'll want to be careful here. If your original artwork is smaller than 3000 by 3000 and you resize it manually, there's a chance it will be blurry and you won't meet criteria number two. Criteria number two being that your artwork must correspond to the metadata. We recommend that you always include your artist name and release name on the artwork as it will help provide context. When doing so, it is very important that you write them exactly the same way as you did in the metadata for your release, meaning the way you registered it with your distributor. Your third criteria is quality. This seems like common sense, but images must not be blurry, distorted, pixelated, or present any other quality issue. To make sure of that, make sure your image is big enough and then zoom in like this to see if the quality is high enough. If not, Back to the drawing board. Next up is copyrighted content. This is simple, but it is obviously forbidden to use images, logos, or photos which are protected by copyright law without license permission from the owner. Another simple criteria, no pornography. Always avoid showing nudity on your cover art. Next, we have additional information. This is a rule specific to Apple Music, which prevents you from adding any other text information other than your artist name and release name. We do, however, recommend you follow this rule even if you're not releasing on Apple Music for one reason. Keeping text info to the bare minimum gives you more space to be visually impactful. When it comes to that explicit content logo you may see on some of your favorite releases, this option is up to you if you have explicit tracks on your release you can use the Parental Advisory Explicit Content logo if you want to, but you don't have to. However, you can only use the Parental Advisory Explicit Content logo if at least one of your tracks is marked as explicit on your release, meaning that you can't use it if you don't have at least one explicit track. The last stipulation here for your artwork is that you must leave out references to physical packaging, digital products, or retailers meaning that barcodes and platform logos, such as the logos for Spotify or Apple Music, are strictly forbidden. Those are the rules you need to follow to ensure that your artwork complies with all the streaming and download platform rules and requirements. Now, there are plenty of other visual and artistic rules of thumb that you can utilize to help your artwork stand out, as well as give you that extra shine that will attract new listeners. Today, we're gonna to continue to keep it brief, but we're gonna show you an example from an artist from our community that helped them find success with their artwork. But, would a webinar on this topic be helpful for you? I don't know, maybe so, maybe not. Let us know down in the comments below as we're here to help and we're looking forward to creating more new content for our community this year. All right, back to it. For our first example, check out the striking color tones used here by band Marina Gree. Colors portray emotions and if you choose to use color theory when it comes to creating your album artwork, check out this example of using grays and blues to portray a melancholic vibe. On the contrary, if you decide to use yellows, oranges, or reds when it comes to your artwork, this often portrays a more upbeat tone if that's the vibe of your album and the vibe that you're going for. This is also a great example of how a good artwork can create a whole universe for your release that fans will recognize instantly. The band used a similar vibe which was actually parts of the final album artwork for each of the singles off their album that you can see here. They used the same visual theme for all their visuals such as their Spotify banner and social media 
which helps to establish a cohesive brand image. All around, great stuff here from Marina Gris. There are many ways to make cover art depending on your budget and skill level. However, if you release music with iMusician, we make it easy for you with our artwork generator that you see here. If you need help getting started creating your release with us, check out our tutorial linked here in the top right corner. With our artwork generator, instead of uploading an existing artwork, you can simply click Create from Template here and have an artwork ready for you in just a few seconds. About as easy as it gets. If you have some design skills but are still working with no budget, we recommend utilizing the platform Canva. This graphic design tool helps you create any type of design for free with unique elements, pictures, templates, and an easy to use drag and drop workflow. Simply browse the templates for inspiration or create your own from scratch like this but don't forget to put in the required dimensions. You can also go even further with a pro account, and since you're here watching this video, head to the link in the description to get 20% off your first year's subscription. If you are in fact working with a budget or have something to offer, it is always a good idea to think about collaboration. This can mean reaching out to artists that you like on socials, such as on Instagram, you can reach out to design schools as there's often opportunities to work with students, or you can check out freelance platforms like Fiverr to find your ideal collaborator. You'll often be surprised by the talent you can find on Fiverr for under 50 bucks or less. If you happen to have the skill set and are lucky enough to have the budget to go along with it, then hey, you're probably gonna be good to go. Again, it doesn't hurt to gain inspiration from other independent artists out there, especially like the ones we showed you today. Thanks for checking out this tutorial. We hope you learned something, but again, if you have any questions about anything we covered today, or would like to see us cover more on this topic in a masterclass or a webinar, let us know down there in the comments and be sure to subscribe if you haven't because we have so much more content coming to you this year on our channel. We'll see you next time.